never ever put Carl Franz in a poll unless you want him to win the damn thing. He's won the poll and even though they're getting a remake in probably two months, here we are with the Empire. They've had enough changes in the last few patches to make them really interesting and this video itself is I think about six months late. So sorry about that and here we go. If Thrones of Decay is out, there will be a remake of this and maybe this can act as a reference point. Just to lay out the structure, I will go through five critical tips which will really help inform your campaign, but more importantly, we will work towards this recreation in this walkthrough, and as you see, it ends up looking pretty damn good by turn 40. We actually win the campaign at turn 36, but this is not indicative of an easy campaign. Boy, did I have to sweat to earn this. I think it shows some really great lessons and some ideas of how you can react to situations because everything goes wrong in this remake. On the demo version, everything was easy, went right. This version went terrible, but we still managed to win the campaign by turn 36. This is how. This rule is so important, I'm jamming in right here. If you don't watch this video, learn this. It's called the 2000-2000 rule because I couldn't think of anything else. So at the start of every turn, you need either 2000 prestige or 2000 gold. One or the other, both can be nice, but you typically want to spend your gold, so try to have over 2,000 or at least 1,000 prestige. But the reason why 2,000 is nice, you might have two events in a row that will degrade your prestige by 1,000, but these will trade you for one Imperial Authority. By not having enough prestige in the bank, you are foregoing Imperial Authority, which can be very, very difficult to get. So 2,000 gold or 2,000 prestige, never ever end your turn without that, and try to look at your buildings and make sure you can upgrade them in time, because getting Reichland up and running will get your campaign up and running. So here we are, Carl Franz, 20 turn guide, and more importantly, how to defeat the threats of the day. There is a lot going on in this campaign. Namely, you're starting threats of Festus, he's the strongest. You have uh, Kazarak the One-Eye, very, very annoying because he can herd stone and block you out of this area, as well as the Changeling who starts down here, who's not too much of a problem really, but you didn't really need more because you also have the impending threat of uh, Vlad von Karstein. So, uh, how does this all really shake out? The biggest change is this. Marienburg can now be confederated. In my... I had a run already penned out for this, but I haven't gone with that. I decided to do a test run, and thank God I did, because this is quite different to what I would have done a few months ago. We have the ability to confed these guys, whereas you didn't before, and they tend to get quite chummy and even military ally with Bretonia. So we want Marienburg eventually because it's very lucrative, but we don't really want to travel to and take these uh, northern provinces here because it gets us in a lot of trouble. So what's our objective here? So we're turn 20. This has gone very well. This has gone very, very well, by the way. Do not expect to have results like this, uh, especially on your first turn, but uh, we've managed to uh, work our way through to take Midland, Hockland, and uh, this should be your main goal is by turn 20, all you're really focused on is getting Reichland and hopefully Middenland or getting close to that under control. Now, Boris, I have confederated him here. There he is. Um, he will get wiped out. There's a chance to get wiped out, but you're going to resurrect him. So first rule here is only resurrect legendary lords. Otherwise, if you don't, you'll resurrect them into a single territory and that'll get wiped out and you will lose Imperial authority. The second, so that's the first thing. The second rule is do not confederate Talabakland before anyone else. We're going to use these guys as a way of farming Imperial Authority. We want to keep them with that nice high starting Imperial Authority. We have the Black Pit. We're going to pass that back in exchange for Middenstag and that will get some money on the side and that will complete our territory here. So this is the goal that you should have. You want to have Reichland and Middenland complete in their entirety. Next tip is the Wood Elves. Make sure you stay on track and look at this guy's relations. Durthu can go very nasty. He can underway underneath these mountains and basically wreck all of Reichland before you can even react. Do what you need to do, pay what you need to pay. War with these guys is possibly the most detrimental thing to your entire campaign. Like literally I'd want to throw my campaign out if they declare war on me. It's not fun. Uh, he's quite poor. You know what, here we go. The good thing is they're also really good allies because they're insular you can rope them into all sorts of wars and send them across the world and they can be your uh, personal lapdogs. Vlad von Karstein, build yourself up and get gunpowder. Your choice of buildings here is also very key. We have enough money now to build the Castle Reichsguard but the most important thing is getting your handgunners up as well as this lovely Alt of Conclave. It's now only tier 3 and it will increase your wizard cap by 2. Following my guide by turn 20 you will have 2 battle wizards and 3 empire captains to help hold that line and then you can start pumping out those warrior priests.
Uh, just a quick reminder guys, if you are enjoying the video, please consider liking and subscribing, it really helps out. Ask any question in the comments, I answer everything. And if you'd like to talk strategy, feel free to join the Discord. Cheers. And here we are starting a brand new legendary campaign as Carl Franz, all default stats. Third one, let's win this first fight. So first up, grab your handgun units and stretch them to about three quarters out and we're going to face them in here. We've got a nice open area here. They're going to get funneled in just a little bit from this uh, rock formation here. And this is the starting point of your army. You want a single character, Karl Franz, up the front so these guys can absolutely soak the units that he pins in place. We're now going to go one, two, three units of infantry. We don't want them to be obstructing our handgunners too badly, right? But we want them to go and meet the enemy before they charge into the handgunners, right? So it's a bit of a game of holding off, blasting as much as you can, but catching them before they get in. Do not let your range units get tied up. Um, this would normally be dangerous to have artillery back so far, but they don't have any cavalry, so we're good. They're just in range and we're going to bomb their range units first. So always target their range units. Here we have our halberdiers and our rocks guard, and we're gonna keep them in reserve. We're gonna come around and flank with them. Um, we also wanna preserve their hit points. We want these basic units to take the brunt. Let's start the battle. So, there we are. It's in range, so we're just going to keep bombing this crossbowman. And this is forced the engagement. No one likes to stand there and keep getting bombed. Move up, Carl Franz. Cool, and holding spacebar just to assess your line of fire. We want these guys focused and unobstructed. One reason why I like having more square formations is it gives us more mobility. We can move these guys up, and then these guys can shoot through that line and protect them or they can come around here and then reposition. Very good. Alright, so Carl Franz charging in. Good, see these nice shots for getting the flank there. Very, very good. Okay, now we have their range units. We're going to send our Reichsguard up here. I like to actually draw the length of the formation so I know that they're not going to get caught. Alright, we're going to counter charge them in, counter charge these guys in. Very good. Alright. They can head up there. Our Rock's Guard are going to make them break. Let's fire our artillery into Karl Franz there. And after the battle, you can get some gold, but in this case, we're just going to replenish our army, which we'll get a lot of because we got so many captives, and our army is brand new. As a good rule of thumb, route marcher, you can't go wrong. Nothing is more infuriating than not being able to make that critical distance when you need it and go and capture Grunberg, your first settlement, and let's do it again. Here we are on the battlefield, and we're going to set up in a position which is most favorable to us. Uh, I just want to start in a position where we can start peppering them with artillery and force them to come to us and uh, fill the engagement that way. That's great. Now, in reserve, we're going to put our halberdiers. We're doing this because the Albadiers aren't shielded and they are a hard unit to replace. The Swordsmen, very replaceable, and we are going to treat them as such. Karl Franz, up the front, number one. You can double tap the button, which will send you to that unit. So, Lord number one, can't recommend that enough. Very, very handy. It's keeping them busy. So, these guys are trying to chase these horses, so they are going to defend... Right, we are hitting their general. Alright, we're going to focus fire on that unit there. Holding alt and bringing our halberdiers right behind this unit to get that flank. Cool. Okay, I don't want to bombard these horses. So let's start peppering these guys. Now you notice we're holding back just enough that we can catch them. So we want to keep our formation together. Stretching these guys out and blocking my gunpowder. And now we're going to charge in. Cool. Now watch this. We're going to set these guys up so they don't obstruct our gunpowder. And now, bang. Look at that. That is an excellent setup. So when you want to chase the unit down, click on it and then turn off guard mode. And they will just keep on pushing them away. And they won't have the chance to find their courage and turn back around. We won the battle. We gained some prestige and some really cool armor, which is going straight on Karl Franz. Uh, don't loot, don't sack, just straight up occupy, it will slow you down by having rebellions. We just want to do a regular occupy. Okay, and we're going to now rush swordsmen. I know this sounds crazy, but trust me this works. The line holding of your army is so, so important. You've got the gunpowder, you've got the offense, you need defense, we need to make our humble troops really hold their own. So that's what I recommend. We're now going to hire 
two more swordsmen. So I forgot to mention this earlier, we are going to do all this with basic units, no DLC. I understand it's an expensive game. If in addition to boosting your swordsman on the skill line, you're also going to get this basic upgrade because it allows you to get access to this state weapons, another four melee defense. This is on every infantryman that guards every garrison, every fort, everywhere will get this bonus. Really, really great. Now we are going to raise a second lord and as I promised, we will start off just with a humble general of the empire. Choose one which boosts the whole army and we go and give him Route Marcher to let him uh, move a bit more mobile. Upgrade Altdorf and let's do some trading. So, Boris, we of course wanted this guy to live for as long as possible. Now you go to Quick Deal. So who's going to live for a long time? Teledakland will, Avaland will. The rest of these guys, you can... Don't throw them under the bus. Be nice to them. Help them out if you can. But accept that this is a losing battle. Let's sign everything we can with Taylor Backland because we get a bonus in fealty with him because we have high relations. You get plus two at, at the tops. Okay, Whistleland. No, we want these guys on side as well. We will eventually confederate them, but they're a bit of a later game consideration. You don't need to rush them. The idea is we're taking from the provinces that we think are in a bit too much trouble and we're going to definitely gift the provinces we want to have win. Now, now, Boris is going to have a hard time. I have no problem giving him a small gift. People think the AI just gets free money. They don't. They do use money. And if you deprive them of it, then it's going to really hurt them. He gave us 700. We're only giving him an extra 200, yes. really. And it's going to help him build some more troops because he has Kazrak one eye coming down here. And he has Festus the Leech Lord making his way here. He has a lot of trouble to start off with. The last thing we're going to do is give one gift to Marienburg. See how this is trending down? You always want it trending up. Being really low is bad, but not a death sentence. But you don't want it low and declining. Just one gift every now and then will keep it improving. And it's definitely worth it. We're going to control this and he can backdoor us anytime. We don't want that. This is an investment. We're investing in your diplomacy. Don't think that you're just spending your money throwing it away. You are investing in your diplomatic position. One last thing, do not ever befriend these dwarfs, okay? The, these dwarfs right here, they are at war with Durthu. These Durthu will hate you if you befriend these dwarfs. This is an absolute death sentence. There's no way they live. These are not the good dwarfs over here. D good dwarfs there, shit dwarfs here. Don't be friends with them. It will ruin everything. Like I said, having happy wood elves means that this whole bottom kind of takes care of itself. Start of turn two, and we have managed to roll a gray wizard, which is shadow magic. We've got to roll with the punches. We're on legendary, but if you didn't get the one you want, you can always try to re-roll. The best laws of the empire, of course, life because of healing. Fire, because it will just shred these low level targets. And of course, beast magic, which is pretty good. And you get to fly a griffin. So let's jump into turn two. So we're going to move Carl Franz as far as he'll go. Notice that he's still in our territory. We want that. It will heal our army. And we'll move our new lord up here with him. And of course, hire two more swordsmen. Check your diplomacy screen. Any quick deals. Okay, there's Hockland. They're desperate to uh, make friends with us. And you know what? I want their money more than anything else. So they're not going to be around too much longer. So we're pulling the wealth out of them. This is a dick move. I normally like to roleplay and not absolutely stooge people like this. But Carl's here to save the world. He's making the hard decisions. So there's Ostermark. Cool. Midland. Of course, we get military access. Good stuff. Now, you have one or two options here. One, you can give uh, Boris one more gift, or you can choose to live on the wild side, and you can uh, steal some technology with your new mage to try and get an extra level. We're gonna risk it for the biscuit. Ah, uh, he failed, but it got him some extra experience. Once he is rank three, with almost every law, you'll get a really great uh, spell, which will help you deal some more damage, and that will save you casualties in the subsequent battle. So. This is a good way to get yourself some experience and establish yourself. Turn three, we're going to take this settlement now with our general by himself because he's going to have Karl Franz come in and reinforce the battle. So just encircle it to hold that battle still and let's move Karl Franz. Because it's encircled, we can now move within that zone of control unimpeded. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Make sure you're within your generals, not the settlement, the general himself. About there, looks like a good spot. Mage with Karl Franz. Still on the battlefield to keep our army strong. We need to not die for a minute. You can often hide inside the trees, but uh, I feel like having some fun. In come the reinforcements. It's often easiest to start your formation with your ranged units. So let's hockey the artillery. Place it there. Go hand gunners. Hand gunners. Number them both. And make a quick wall of infantry. Box them out like this. 
because once they're set up, we can move them around however we like. As you can see, we're just out of that range. We're happy with that formation. We're gonna control A, select the whole thing, and Alt to move it up a little bit. Control to tilt it. And I love this uh, flank protection right here. And we have the cavalry advantage over here, which I'm sure is making them uneasy. Let's see how they like getting bombed. It isn't legendary, so they are trying to duck and avoid some of the artillery fire. That's fine with me. Disrupting their archer fire is probably the biggest uh, priority. Alright, there's a chance here to envelop this column. Let's do that. Let's send our swordsmen into one flank, force into the other. Normally it's nicer to take a bigger flank and get that 13 second charge bonus. And our great swords will easily win this engagement against those spearmen. So, good positioning. We're happy here. When you have a ranged unit on the ropes, just take off guard mode and you can chase them down. And they won't be able to do much from there. Okay, turn off guard mode and chase them down. We want these territories healthy. Okay, now we have some leftover movement with Carl, with one notch outside it, right? So there we are. That's where you want to be. By the way, never get regular spearmen. They're garbage. And personally, I'm not a fan of archers. Yes, you can do some really cost-effective shenanigans with them, but I think just swordsmen, they can be useful for a fair few many turns. These guys, if you just hold on a few more turns, you can get crossbows. Way better investment. I don't like archers. I think they're garbage, but I admit that they can be used to uh, get some efficient outcomes. Now, normally I wouldn't want this barracks here in the capital, but we're so close to tier two and we can get crossbows. We need these ASAP if we're gonna keep up. So we'll demolish our secondary barracks here at Elgreich and focus on economy there. On the diplomacy screen, we have the option to start signing with Baston, but always look at what their relations are like with uh, their neighbors. Uh, at the moment, they're on pretty good terms with the, with the Wood Elves, so we could sign something with them, but I really don't want to risk it. They have War with Dwarfs that can tunnel under and outmaneuver us. If it's mean? not sure about it, don't sign it. One of the biggest of mistakes I see is people signing well, everything for the sake of some quick gold. It's not worth it. Now, Hockland are dying next turn. Sorry, you can pay your last respects to Lord Franz with a healthy donation, and the Empire thanks you gladly for your services. Of course. Empire, Let's give death. Boris one more gift and this will so. hopefully give him enough money to at least raise the Lord and a few troops to hold that enemy back just a little bit longer. We're coming, Boris. Uh, that's a bit close. That's a bit close. I'll tell you what. Let's move Moving on. one more step back. You do not want to get hit and have that garrison pulled I out. It's not a turn four and we don't have enough prestige. We could not have possibly got enough prestige. But this is why. Always have a thousand. We've just let one Imperial Authority slip, but what else can you do? Sometimes it gives the option of using gold, which is why you I also want a thousand gold. So, we can move yes. Karl Franz another step closer, we so we'll send our secondary lord to take Helmgard. We absolutely have to fight us on the battlefield because we will lose everything. Let's do it. Okay, now this is one of the hard battles you're going to have with this campaign, and you can probably auto-resolve it on the easy difficulties, but this is a legendary guide showing you how to get away with it, and it is going to cost you a lot. Your main goal is to protect your armor-piercing units, your halberdiers, your handgunners, and your uh, greatswords, and of course those mighty rocks guard. So we're going to start the battle with these guys over one side because we have our reinforcing army. We're going to number this captain number two and he's already on horse which is excellent. So we can use these two infantry here just to mark out the very edge of this tower because we don't want to get too close. Now we're going to send this captain all the way over to the other side because at the moment all their balance of power is going to be uh, centralized around there. They have a ton of archers and they will absolutely destroy you. We need to have multiple forces to spread them out so they don't just shower us because they will just destroy your army. If you try to blob up, you're asking to lose. Now there will usually be a couple of units that do want to shoot you but they're a bit smarter now. They don't waste all their ammo on a single entity. Here we go. So you're looking for the guys that do want to shoot you. If you're a regular viewer, you know that I typically hate wasting ammo. It can be done. I did it on my previous run without uh, cheesing any ammo, but I'm going to show you a way which doesn't kill your characters because it is actually quite hard to do this without losing your key units. So we're going to send him there to start knocking down the door. Now the rest of our army has come here, so let's get group our greatswords, bring them up here, behind them some more greatswords, handgunners will be down the back, 
down the very back, and of course, our artillery. We'll set them up around here, but of course, out of range. Do not put anything in range of the enemy. The number Carl, your wizard, and your secondary general as one, two, three. Let's get these Reichsguard over here. Again, look at the range of their towers. So this tower is inactive, so let's move the Reichsguard like that. Going to uh, hide under the gatehouse. Now we're moving the whole army up, except for the Mortars. The Mortars, of course, will stay back here. Everyone else is moving up. And target any archers that are staying still and firing. That is a perfect shot right there. So these are our two prongs. Now once these guys break through, you need to look at the best course of action. You're going to run up and take one of these uh, towers down here. So which is the safest way? Straight ahead looks fairly good. They've got one unit of mounted knights around here and they are the only thing that can catch you. So just be aware of that. Do not get your handgunners too close. Archer ammo will absolutely shred them. Keep them back here safely. They're not doing much, but they're not dying either. And believe me, that is harder, harder feat than you would think. We're going to get our swordsmen. And I want you to place them on the edges like this because this gets them facing out. You want the wall facing towards the enemy archers so they're not getting easy shots into their back. It looks like it will be easier to go to the side here. What are you doing, horsies? Come on. Draw a nice line so they will all land in there and they will capture as best they can. Alright, Carl. Use any abilities you have to take down their lord. Okay, cool. Alright, so now this is what we want. We want to send one unit down here. And we're going to envelop. Everyone get on the walls. Get on the walls. Cool. Now take guard mode off. This guy will chase those archers to the depths of hell and they won't be engaged in the battle anymore. Exactly what we want. Cool. Now we're trying to make, as you see here, we're trying to envelop the enemy. We've got our uh, offensive infantry. Now don't stop to fight these knights. I've experimented with uh, holding down knights and sieges. It's not worth it. We're going to take this and come back down and trash their archers. Okay, we want to bombard this area here. Cool. Okay, charge them. And send our captain into this first group and then our Reichsguard into this next one. Come on. Alright. See this? We're getting our handgunners and we're going to station them. Alright. You can do a manual shot here by holding Alt and I think that'll be a nice spot there. I think we'll get a bit more saturation by going manual. Alright, let's get these guys on the ground. Get down from the walls. I want to push them off the walls so we can hold them back. Okay, I'm going to keep these Reichsguard up here in reserve because I'm worried that they'll die. And I don't want them to die, obviously. Good. Focusing them down. Got this crossbowman. We need to make sure we eliminate all their range units and then we are good. They don't seem to have much left. Oh, I forgot about half my troops. <laughs> Typical. Pyrrhic victory and gladly taking it. We have over a thousand prestige now, so next time we have a dilemma, we might be able to get plus one imperial authority. We of course want to occupy. Summon the elector cult. And with what's left of this army, we will be taking Elhart. Leveling up, we want Emperor's Finest to get that boost on our frontline troops, help them hold, and of course the uh, Penemble Pendulum, whichever school of magic you have, there's nearly always one it spell in this first category and in the second category. Check out my shorts on the spells, it'll probably give you a hand. Now since this guy's mainly reinforcing, I'm going to turn him into a beat stick. He's going full melee for the rest of his line. Let's take this final settlement and complete Rockland. On the battlefield we have a nice open map here and we really want to maximize our distance. Of course targeting those range units first. Let's place Carl. And his caster up front. Anyone who's got some decent hit points is going to have to hold the front line. And then our handgunners will do the majority of our damage. And we're going to hide these guys in reserve because I don't want them to die. So I'm going to hold alt and we're going to fire just a bit outside the range of our units right there. And that should deal more damage to them than to us. Oh shit. using your spells to deal most of your damage. And yeah, buddy, we have our very first province, turn four. 
love to see it. Bring me to my men. We're going to upgrade our barracks to tier two. And the settlement we're gonna upgrade is Uberike. The reason this is, is you want to upgrade safe settlements. The biggest way to waste your money is to lose settlements. Losing ground is really, really painful because you have to take the time to rebuild. And of course the construction is thousands at a time. So build up the unsafe provinces last, unless you know you have several turns to build up walls. If you're in a really dicey situation, build the back up first, but if you've got lots of time, build the frontier up first because the walls will slow the enemy. In this case, we're gonna get invaded way sooner than we have time to get walls up. There's no way we're gonna get walls up in time, potentially. This could go in one turn, so could that. So we choose our safest settlement besides a capital, capital's always first, and we're going to upgrade that to tier two, and we'll get a bit more gold to improve our cash flow. Tradables are always nice. Now here some people will say, oh, go growth, power up growth. That is Warhammer 2 strategy. You do not need growth. The way I will set you up is a safe way. If you're running out of money and can't defend yourself, you will get snowballed against you so hard here. So we are going to go money. So tradables, barracks, money, that's all you need. And of course this amazing council edict, which will give you plus 20 growth, as well as increase your tariff income. Yeah. And let's see our relations with Marienburg. Now, we do not want Marienburg to attack us this turn, and they've got no enemies right now. So let's see if we can ask them to join a war. So if a faction has no enemies, they are often very easy to persuade to join an existing war. Not this guy. <laughs> Bad example. So let's give them a gift. And it'll have to be two small gifts. Yes. But that has got it improving. Okay, Boris is still getting his tail kicked nothing new there it's quite normal for him to die here but we'd like him to hold on we don't have enough cash i'd love to give him a gift but we also need money for our own construction turn five and hockland is destroyed that is no surprise to anyone and that is why you should extract as much money as you can out of them and invest it into poor mr todd bringer here who is likely on his last legs now by this turn i've actually seen him destroyed by these goblins here or even by the beastmen it's kind of a race to the bottom um, it doesn't really matter too much, but if he doesn't die, we don't lose that Imperial Authority. So that's always nice. Now I'm going to show you how to use your heroes to do some scouting. Let's get this hero. And if we see in the movement, we've got 50 knights. So we want, I know that sounds silly, under 50% so you can come back into the safety of your army, get the replenishment, and most of all, if you get attacked, you can use your magic to defend your army. So let's move out to this middle area here. Hell, so we instead are going to double down on trying to uncover any enemy armies. Yeah, let's move out here. Okay, cool. So we have an enemy army there, and it looks like Boris is gonna cark it next turn, and there's not a lot we can do about that. If you've got no expansions, go to Swordsman, but I'm gonna hire a free company militia. They're a fun unit. Just check that diplomacy screen on the quick deal. Particularly Balthazar Gelt, we want this Imperial Authority to keep increasing so we can confederate him. We are just gonna use one or two. We'll increase relations twice with him. We also want Null on side. They're our neighbors. Let's give them one lot of prestige to keep this tracking. Pass your swordsmen over as they will replenish much more. Inside the garrison. Turn six. Now just remember, always back the count that's closest to you. They're most likely not going to die. In terms of moving our army, we're gonna move Karl Franz up. This is gonna be the most critical point around here. Kazrak might have already taken that. If he has, he's probably going to Alt Dorf first. If he's taken this, Bring your armies up here, hide Karl Franz in the bushes here, and have your regular lord up here, and you'll be able to go reinforce and counterattack Kazrak. But hiding Karl Franz here has 80% ambush success. This is great because he'll be overly confident, and then he can just force march and reinforce. We still have Boris alive here, so we are going to bring Karl right. Franz up this reinforcement ring here. But we also need 70%. There we go. That'll do nicely. Ambush stance, they excellent. Also move your Let second lord up Onward. towards Altdorf. Three crossbows. Return your hero back to your army and that's your turn. Oh, he didn't do it. He went straight for Altdorf. What? Okay, well that's all right. Well, that's kind of what I was expecting to do. But the cool thing is Boris has stayed alive. We don't lose an Imperial Authority point. So this is kind of win-win. And let's bolster our relations with Midland, of course. Ah, oh, we didn't get our new troops. That sucked. General coming up to reinforce. Yes. And now like France going in for the kill. Might even be able to order us all this. And I think I will. 
And that is him wiped. We gained Rune Fang for defeating him, as well as some extra ambush defense. Really going to come in handy. Don't forget to uh, equip the items you get, they really do help. Let's finish putting points in infantry and start investing in our firearms. But then melee defense. Melee defense is absolutely key here. Now you'll have the chance to upgrade Helmcart. You will be able to do this soon enough, but it's not worth doing at the expense of Reichland. Upgrading this capital is your number one priority. Having a lot of tier two settlements will give you more access to weaving houses, an excellent building, very cheap to build, immediately gives you 250 gold, really great return. Now you'll see some terrible advice saying spend every cent you have, look twice. You are going to at some point need 4,000 gold, you might need extra turns. The biggest waste you can have is when you have population capacity and you can't build those upgrades. Always have enough. Once you get to tier three, things will start moving for you as the Empire. We'll let those units heal in there and let's hire three. Ah, uh, he's ended his pact with us. Our main goal is to eliminate Festus. Primarily, it's really just him. Once we've eliminated him, things get easy. Turn eight, always keeping an eye out here. Can we talk to Durthu? We can't, but he has just eliminated these dwarfs. Uh, we, could, we can start signing some agreements. Now, the way you read the situation it requires a bit of advanced diplomacy, but it's not really that advanced. It just requires a keen eye. So what are we trying to deal with here? We know we're safe across this border here. We have a limited amount of time until Vlad gets through here. So we're only worried about these northern provinces here. So if we click on Midland, we can see he's at war with pretty much everyone. So that's his problem. But we have these goblins here. We want to attack them, but is that going to expose us to being counterattacked? by anyone. The only person in range could possibly be Kazrak. Let's check his balance of power. He's got none. When you wipe the beastmen out early game, they have a really hard time rebuilding their army. So he's got probably two turns before he starts rebuilding his army. That's enough for us. So can we safely attack these goblins? Yes, we can. So let's do it. Let's first move our uh, mage up here. Just double check. It's got the trespass line. We're not actually trespassing. Cool. So we move our secondary army up. Bring the wizard into that army. Join the war. Or some cash. Yes. Carl. I am Prince Let's and do it. Emperor. That is an unpleasant order resolve. Shit, that's a lot of troops. Now on the battlefield, we're starting on this hill. We're using the high ground and elevation to shoot down with our handgunners, double checking that they have a really nice line of sight, yes, which they do. Uh, pretty useful all their reinforcements are coming from that direction too so that means they'll kind of uh, dogpile us this way we can control those engagements we also have our reinforcements coming through here what will it do to the timer oh four minutes that's a bit too far well carl's being an absolute chad beating the hell out of these guys nice rogues guard out to the flank but staying out of the range. So here's the tip, stay out of the range of their arrows, like that. And victory, look at that, lovely. Emperor. And we can finish off whatever they have there. Let's first rank up. On the battlefield, we're going to deploy quite far back so our artillery can do some heavy lifting. These guys have some good ranks, so we don't want them to die. We're going to hold them back so they're protected. All right, targeting the archers, of course because they have to stay still to shoot. Logically, there has to be some point where they're not going to be able to react well. We shouldn't have any trouble finishing this. Now, this is another trick you do with handgunners. Stretch yourself out of line. Remember, they can still shoot through each other, so you don't lose too much by getting too narrow. But set yourself up. If you take that extra moment to set yourself up a flank, watch this. Bruh. Satisfying, right? People wonder why gunpowder is so popular in this game. It is fun. Man, gunpowder is fun. Oh no. No, I didn't get wiped, did it? No. No, I lost my free company militia. Ah. Okay, so we have some choices now. We could take the territory, we could gift it back to uh, Midland, and that is what we're going to do. We're going to do the right thing and try to win them over. So, so making sure that they have no armies left, I am actually going to do the Cardinal Sin, and I'm going to force march because I want that settlement next turn. Okay, now you need to raise a third lord. That's right, this one is just going to do a traffic stop to bring some troops up to Karl Franz because Festus is pretty damn strong. This is a very vulnerable settlement. Do not keep your eyes off what's going on here. What? <laughs> what? Karl died from attrition. 
The mighty leader of the empire had died from attrition. Oh, that is dissatisfying. You're in charge till Carl gets back. We're starting around here. We've got a big obstruction, which we don't need to deal with. And in my time of need, my wizard is stuck in a rock and a hard place. Oh no, there he is. You made it. You made it, buddy. Oh, I lost a couple of infantry units, but uh, none of our major starting units, so I'm happy with that result. I need to heal my army. Fuck you. <laughs> well, well, you can pay for it. Is this going to divide us? Nah, it's all good. Alright, we're going to hire some crossbows. Back at Reichland. Always double check your enemies, so he still can't afford an army. So, he, once you kill his army, he's out for like three turns. Oh man, Festus, you are on an absolute tear. We need more frontline troops. I'm just going to have to hire these guys as some temporary chaff so we can heal up. And then we'll sell that for some cash. Look, just discovered down here we have Grom the Ponch and he is not happy. He looks pretty, pretty anti-Empire right now. So, that didn't happen last time. It's another challenge. Alright, so we have some leftover Imperial Authority. Let's use some on Gelt. And of course, we might as well use one, two, three uses. Don't declare war on me. Ah, you bitch. Please don't take... Oh, man. I have not seen this happen before. Heinrich Kemmler has taken Marienburg. What the actual hell. And we have Grom the Point. This is by far the worst campaign I think I've ever seen. Let's see if we can get out of it. Of course, backing Avaland. Oh no. Paravon. They're like the only thing there that we're checking Grom the Ponch. Overwhelmed by threats if we don't finish him. He's going to start raising an army next turn, but we need to get there without harming ourselves. Okay, it's going to harm our army. We don't have a choice. We just got to roll with this. Champion of the faith. We don't have anything we can use. Fuck. This is not good, guys. Not good at all. Cool. Okay. Oh man, you don't have any enemies either. Come to get yourself chopped up. Any chance you to attack me. these guys? Nope. What if I join your war? What if I join this war against Mausoleum? You're really not interested, are you? What if I give you some tribute? Dinner time afterward, right? I'm gonna try. This might do it. Because if he backdoors us here, we're kind of screwed. I can't handle three fronts at once. I probably should have retreated back, but I really need, feel the need to wipe out Kazrak. At least if we take that, we'll get Boris back on track. Nice a dilemma to increase Midland. Alright. He took an extra turn to heal up, but that's exactly what we needed. Oh, this is going to be tough, but we have to. We are going to deploy our army through this gap here. We're taking this herdstone and setting ourselves up at a distance here. And we're going to start bombarding any of their ranged units because they will build up some barricades, no doubt. I have my lord over here. Probably should have gone and capture some points. Yeah, let's have some fun. And we're moving up. Just keep in mind, many of their units have shrouded. You're probably not as safe as you think when you're versing the beast, and all the scaven for that matter. Oh, and there's the enemy. There they are. And there we go, Pyrrhic victory, didn't lose anything, and this is Middenheim, their capital, we of course need to get it back and get some Imperial Authority back in the bank, in the positive. Now that was hard because we would normally have a secondary army that we hired down here, uh, sent back up to uh, deal with that and to reinforce that battle, but we didn't have it because we've had the worst case scenario, which is Heinrich Kemmler somehow absolutely destroying Marienburg, ready to pounce. I've never ever seen that, as well as this. Grog the Ponch is doing amazingly well. These guys have almost made a power alliance. They surely have to be liking each other. Okay, so we have more important than ever to make sure that we have Durthu on side. Can we, can we initiate dialogue? No, we can't. Oof. We need money in the bank 
to bribe him and get him to love us. Okay. Oh, we are so broke, but if they declare war on us, we are monumentally screwed. First, can we get him to join any of these conflicts? Oh, nope, we can only gift him. But that'll get things ticking to the positive, and the trend is almost more important than the overall rating in the grand scheme of things. Now on the plus side, we now have 9 fealty with Marienburg, and as you see this list, once we hit 150, it will likely give us the option to confederate with him. He might sail up to Gorsell, but I'm thinking he could attack here. So we have a chance of him sitting here in ambush stance. He has a secondary army right there. Great stuff. What's our relations like here with his Wood Elves? Not good, but they have no enemies. Will they join the, this fight? Yes. So now we have a few decisions to make. Now, ugh. Next turn, it is going to give us the option. The question is, do we want to confederate them just yet? And the answer is honestly no, because we just gifted these back. They're all tier one buildings. That's not even built yet. This is going to cost a fortune to help it make money. Now the question is, is this going to bring you more value than it's going to cost to maintain it? Well, maintenance also includes defending from Festus. At the moment, we don't have the money because we need to deal with this invasion and very nervous about another invasion as well as we need cash to get the Wood Elves on side. So that also means we can gift the Black Pit and I want to gift it to these Wood Elves in exchange for, can we get a military alliance? We can't get a military alliance, but we can get a defensive alliance. But the point of this is when Festus declares war on us, he has to declare war on them as well gives us a nice layer of protection and uh, it'll rope these guys into any other wars. Of course. All right, cool. So we've lost a little bit of income by holding on to it, but it was unpleasant climate anyway. No. Okay, is that war with Hopland? So, Sterling, sorry. You come in peace on this fine mark, Tug? Oh, I could use that. He's probably dead the next turn. Let's take his cash. As you say, sir. All right. Your word is my cool. Command. One extra spear. Uh, looking good. What orders? Got our income building. All right, turn twelve, and we have the option of confederating with Midland, and I think it's a bad idea right now. They are better off building up these uh, buildings. We're quite poor. Ah, uh, it's because uh, Sterling was destroyed. Before we bring him down, let's use this army to take out Kemlo. I, will do I think that's pretty good. Mark. And I'm happy to take that chance. Now let's move this guy out of Force March. Oh, he can't quite get home. Oh, he made it, you absolute legend. Cool, now that army is looking much more like an army. Gotta be happy with that. Oh, yes, and we got the ambush. I am stoked. Let's fight it. And on the battlefield, the ambush was successful, so uh, we've got our reinforcements coming in through that way. That's the quickest way to get them on the field. And we have our Lord and some spears at the front, hopefully catch them. We are lacking our frontliners, but here we are. We have hockey each of these groups of archers. We'll go three and four. Let's see how this works. Lovely. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Poor paying attention on my part. He's to blame for that. And we're gonna focus down yet another one of their characters. Good. Okay, the best thing is their their regular troops can't hurt us too badly. So you get them to like roughly 10%, then just change target. Don't waste your time trying to finish these units off. They will eventually crumble, but it does take a bit of time to crumble. Just trust they will. All right, let's finish this guy off. First, we'll buff our stats up. Uh, more important, let's get a hold of the line. Gives us a, an aura of plus five uh, melee defense. Yeah. Gives us a bombard ability. That sounds like a plan. All right, let's chase him down. More melee defense. Two cool. Now what we're going to do is pull this garrison out because they'll reinforce Never. this army here. Now I would love to auto-resolve this because we'll completely wipe the garrison. This might not work, but let's give it a go. The yes! 
I reckon we can do a better job ourselves. Let's start the field. On the battlefield, they've got reinforcements coming, so I think they'll wait for us. But I'm happy to move up and use this flank. Gold. Let's double check. Does he have no more forces? He doesn't have any forces, so we can't get reinforced against. Alright, so we need to upgrade our capital. It's going to cost a lot of money, but it'd be good to get these walls. Just in case, Grom the Ponch does decide to be a dick. Alright, so we've got the changeling on our border here. I need some heavy hitters. Lord Franz, we really need you. He will power up these units more. I reckon he's going to hit us next turn. Alright, just hopefully this guy does not get ambushed with his uh, bullshit stance of Zinch. We need to start improving our gunpowder. So, I don't like the idea I get to have to lose these guys who are, what they, were they, rank 3? But it's only rank 3. These flying units are a really rough matchup against our archers. And uh, we need a lot of uh, firepower to get through these shields. So, I'm actually going to take that as a win. Cool. Yes, yes, the Wood Elves are at war with Grom the Ponch. Alright, this is excellent. This is taking the heat off us. I am so happy. That is amazing news. Um, we don't have to spend money on getting dirt through inside yet, because we haven't discovered it yet. I really need more troops to take Marienburg, which is our next major goal. We're going to have our general run up this way. Carl. Force march this way. Our general can hire. Three more archers. Actually, you know what? Also, make one of those a spearman. Cool. I don't want this guy to declare war on me. I don't think he would. He's probably too preoccupied, but I really can't take that chance. This does mean declaring war on Bellacore, but he's going to hate us either way. We'll, we want him to start taking this territory. I don't want him to take that though, so mm, I'm, I'm thinking of holding off for maybe one turn. I'll hold off a turn because I want to besiege Marienburg, the capital, before anything else. Because if he takes that, it, we're not going to get it. We've got the cash, so we may as well build up and we'll increase our natural resources. Let's upgrade our cash flow. This is a rough dilemma. They will obey. Let's go. Turn, we'll be able to besiege. That's great. So we're going to pass these units into Karl Franz, and he's going to do his quest battle now for some extra cash. And quest battles are a really great way to keep your momentum of your campaign going when you don't have anything else going on this time. Let's do this quest battle. Alright, let's get this quest battle behind us. Yeah, no, I don't like that. Let's move back. Once you get a bit more practice with your spells, you can do some damage on approach, but until you get really good with it, wait until you're really comfortable with the spells and wait for them to get engaged with you first. There's a second army. Holy shit. Not sure how I lost that unit, but uh, I'll take it. <laughs> We're gonna have to. But they gave us a lot of cash, and goddamn, we needed it. Cool. All right, we got a bunch of cool weapons as well, so let's make sure everyone 
has an amazing weapon. The best thing about doing the quest battle right near a settlement is we can now rest Moving in the settlement if we so choose and get the healing. What? We now have the option to build an outpost and it is expensive, we don't have a lot of money but I'm gonna do it. Having this hold up here is going to really defend our northern borders. We want these guys on side and we'll even be able to recruit some of their units. So we have a lot of Imperial authority. Let's buff our relationship with Wissenland. We can certainly use a couple of fuses there to get them up, one more. And I think I'll do another one for Ostland. We don't have anything else to use this stuff on. As long as you have 2,000, we'll be fine. So, and this is why you always have a good amount of cash or prestige in the bank. And we saved ourselves Imperial Authority because we didn't have 1500 gold. So there we are, the 2000-2000 rule. So on turn 16, just keeping an eye on our neighbors. All oh, right, we have contact with Durfu. Can we ask him to join the war with the Barrier Legion? He's not interested. What about the Deceivers? That's a win. Cool, okay, so he's a bit unhappy with us still. That's all right. We'll give him a gift. Okay, good. That's that's tracking the way we want it. So the, enough in common there that he shouldn't hate on us too badly. Oh, that could be useful. You know what? Two hundred gold. That handshake could be worth a lot, and this in time will make Durthu like us because, of course, he likes Brian. So good long-term strategy here. Carl is leading this attack. Of course, we want him to take the bulk of that experience. Attack. And we'll Raise pass the units in to give him a army worthy of taking the settlement. My journey begins. Sweet. Wow, that worked really well. And do not return this to anyone. That is ours. Now surely he wants to peace out. So here you have two options. My original build that I did for this ages ago before the changeling came in, around this time, I think by turn 13, I would take Marienburg and then go take a Blackstone Post here and then sell it. Sweet. Before we do that, can I get... Can I get you to finish them off for me? This is really dodgy. Okay, so this will help secure our friendship with Leonka. Done. Cool. We did start a new war, but it's okay. We're about to end our biggest one. Darkness. Yes. Cool. Okay, so we've just secured that flank. By the comet. Stoked. All right, we don't want the regiments of renown anymore. We're getting rid of the secondary army. That's improved our cash flow considerably. And now we've got his unique line. First, get the reduction 10% upkeep. And once we get a level 3 barracks, we can drop all of our Empire captains with a nice buff to their rank. So hold off getting any captains until you have Carl with that skill. Turn 17, and whilst I normally what never attack the lords that are legendary lords, you don't have to do this. If they're a minor lord, feel free to attack their caravans because you are not going to have to deal with them later on. They will typically get bundled up with the major factions. I am somewhat willing to give this a go. Let's see, I've heard that they've reduced the amount of income you get from the caravan, so let's see what, it's, uh, what it does to us. Okay, so order resolve it. Take what gold we can, and what did that give us? Uh, it didn't give us much at all, really. It gave us some extra experience, so I can't complain at that. So first of all, we want wizards. Because wizards are great. Secondly, we need gunpowder. This is the tool we need right here so to feed Festus. Once we have this, he is not a problem to us. Pick up the pace. Now, we probably could have gone and finished yes. off Kemlar, but that uh, gives this guy something to do. So if your boys find a high level one, which has more troops than a low level one, and then this will mean... The Empire. Cool. I will marshal the band. All right, let's get Galmaraz. Right, let's do this. Well, it's nice and easy when the uh, dwarfs come in to save the day. Oof. Oh yeah, that is why we do the quest battles on those quiet turns because they are an excellent injection of cash if you're a big spender just like me. 
make sure that you have your mighty weapon equipped because you know what <laughs> pretty to easy map. to forget so thank god no one else gets to carry that bad boy but you Carl. okay you get the rifle and rune fang i think that you're you're very worthy we're gonna hold off the rifle card for a few turns the reason being is we're going to build our barracks so we can get our empire captains and then we'll knock that barracks down in favor of the Reichsguard building, okay? And then we hire those Reichsguard and then we're good. We could get the poor, but before we go down the special line, have a look at what your other skills do. Reduction upkeep, because now we have a state level greatsword unit, quite expensive. Let's save some, some of that upkeep. Oh no, Avalanche were destroyed. That, that is not good. Ah, oh, god damn it. Scrag, any chance you join the war against deceivers? Guessing you only have interest in killing elect counts, don't you? What if I join that war? No. Well, that just really hastens our need. Carl will heal in enemy territory. Carl's able to yes. heal whilst in a terrain that's neutral. This will give us a few more tradables. Now increasing our rate of fire for our ranged missile units. Another dilemma, of course we don't want to lose fealty, so we will just use some prestige. So in turn 19, we're moving Pick into this 80% success chance. Ready. And I want the Scott of you, Force March. Move. And I think we can convince Festus to attack us. But we need to clear war on him first, so who, who is Festus able with? I somehow think you can have more money than poor old Boris. Come in peace. Ah, alright. All right, cool. As you say, sir. Done. All right, could be a tough fight, but we'll be all right. Okay, Uber Strike. And we don't need to upgrade our gates. They are good enough for now. Ah, he did not attack us. So, we're going to have to be the ones that attack him. Oh, God, still pretty happy. Okay. Oh, this is going to be a tough fight. So, raise your weapons. This will bolster the nation. And he hides in ambush stance. Oh, he can't. It's too, too close. Alright, we're going hard along one side to reduce the number of towers that can hit us. And we're moving up as such. We have a secondary army coming in over that corner. Let's see how this one shakes out for us. That is done. Give it back to the elector. To the provinces. Otherwise, we won't forgive us, but we also get some imperial authority, so we'll hopefully snatch up a couple of counts in the coming yes. turns. Alright, now we are going to get ourselves three Empire Captains. Sir? One, two, and three. And that will give us the choice and opportunity to knock down this barracks. We can always build another one, which is what we'll do. But we also need some more Lippen Grunberg so we don't get attacked. So the point of getting these guys yes. out was to use Karl Franz's ability. And now we can uh, get these guys up and get some experience on them. So they're a better asset to our faction. We've also got uh, Marienberg, so we can put a trusty captain who's been with us the whole time. Turn 21, we have the chance to get the Golden Order up to 10 Imperial Authority. Let's do that. What a resolve, get some extra cash. I love those events, they are only a good thing. Oh, we only get one per turn, so we're still holding off. I want to get these territories under our control. Okay. Resolve. And do not resurrect this count. He is just going to fall and cost you uh, Imperial Authority. This belongs to Karl now. Alright, so he's got to have another army around. So he's got these two armies and he has another one around somewhere else. We need to find it. 
scouting out with at uh, captains and sending them up to the front lines. We will need to deal with that very soon. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Well, we are confederating Balthazar Geld. So definitely puts us in danger. Where is Geld? What are you doing? Oh, I don't want war with you, Belagar. Slightly non aggression pact with this guy might buy us a little right. bit of time. I don't want it to really piss off Dirt. Oh, he really didn't like that at all. Oh, that really pissed him off. Oof. Okay. Okay. Alright, I get it, man. I get it. What do we need to do to make this right? Blunt. We just can't have him hating on us. Alright, time to take on Festus. Move up, secondary lord. Do I think that that's a good result? Alright, Festus, let's do this. We're castled up hard against this side here, so we can't get flanked. And we're in a pretty good spot. The good thing about Nogal is that they're fairly slow, so if you can get good uh, terrain advantage on them, you are going to do some serious damage. Good night, Festus. Okay, so we've just forced March yes, this lord up here near the Brass Keep, but out of range of this Chaos Lord because we do not want him to catch us. So much so, we're going to make sure he can't get there. Carl will reinforce that battle here. And as for Balthazar Gelt, we had a third lord and we passed all the units of value into these two stacks here. The reason being is I'm basically positive that we're going to get attacked by a Scraggle Slaughterer. Now, this is quite devastating on our keep right now, but I don't really see a way around that until we can disband one of these armies. And we're going to scout out here to make sure that Vlad can't get the jump on us. Take a look at your elected count slots. Bathers our girls in Solent as we want. 1023, we have a dilemma and we have the prestige up our sleeve to prevent two empires going to war and we will get one imperial authority, which means next confederation we gain won't set us back. So let's go up there, have your buddies back. And that's another province secured. Of course, we'll take the resources and we'll take the goal for now. So, Carl, make your way back. Festus must have a single army kicking around somewhere, but that's not bothering me. Alright, let's take this capital back. Who's at war with you? It's a goodbye. Here to serve. That'll be an easy auto resolve. Ah, we need siege equipment. Not a problem. Death to the there's no point raising the elect account, we're just going to have to confederate him anyway, so uh, I hate having to do it, but Agreed. again, we can't have him offside or him. Turn 24, and we are finishing off Festus's army. It's stuck in force march, nowhere to run, Attack. farewell, can it make me fight it? Uh, and this should be easy. The army doesn't move too quickly, so it's rather easy to hit with your spells. Using wind spell, count to three, two, three, and that should get at least some of them. There we are. And victory! Take gold. So that is the Fecundites taken out, and that gives us enough money finally to get the Reichsguard, Castle Reichsguard building, which will allow us to build Reichsguard for even cheaper, with higher ranks, 100% of what we want to do. We'll get those units and we will run them out to Carl. Let's force yes. march Carl back to this castle so he can get his uh, hit points back. Cool. Let's get these captains inside the army. Earning some experience. And Gelt can take the next of these settlements. Completing the province of Avalon. And cementing our front. Going forth. I am the supreme patriarch. 
There's another county, and we will be able to put an elector at the head of it. I will do anything we want to start hiring some gunpowder and some Reichsguard to bring them to the front. So that means we need to save some money. Let's make one really great army. Play some of the better ones. Cool. Let's remove the secondary army. That will give us the funding we need to hire these new units and get them onto the front line. Hold the line, another ability, also with captains and I am ready. law master of metal to reduce the cost of our metal spells. Very, very nice to have. Turn 25 and let's just spend a bit of Imperial Authority to avoid losing fealty with Ostermark. Doors are down and we can continue researching our gunpowder. There might be an ogre camp around here. Before we attack the ogres, let's just make sure there's not. Well, there is one, but I know we can take it. So let's declare war on the ogres. Moving up our secondary army to reinforce. Are they at war with anyone yet? They're at war with Ostermark. May as well get some money. And here we have taken uh, Telebacklin, given it back. So that's hopefully some more Imperial Authority. We now have seven Imperial Authority. Now we need to get Warrior Priests on the field. So we will build a Shrine of Sigma in our capital. Upgrade Marienburg. It looks like it's safe to do so. Just always keep an eye out around here. But, but the good thing is we have Leon Kerr now on the up and up looking a lot healthier and his relations are improving as well visit. so we'll be trading with him in absolutely no time at all all right and everything is looking good just always keep one eye on those wood elves because they can be a bit temperamental last thing is also keep an eye out for belagar he can be a bit hard to please hopefully he just stays out of our way i think he's busy enough don't forget to spend some imperial authority keep these relations shooting up because there's not really much else to do other than this. Might as well keep the offense on and bring in some extra cash. Yep. Do not waste my potential. Well, that was always going to happen eventually. <laughs> oh shit. Turn 26, it's time to start hiring these state troops because we want that counter grinding down so we keep on releasing new state troops. This guy's going to be carrying troops out to the field, so this extra 5% campaign movement is absolutely welcome. Let's add another 5 to it and make him a beat stick on the field. He will be bringing some handgunners out to our armies, as well as let's get ourselves a life mage and another fire mage just because we have a lot of vampires to kill. And this fire will really, really help us get there. Flame off. Cool. Well, since they declared war on us, I feel very comfortable making a move in here. Let's just uncover a bit more of the terrain. Cool, so we're not going to get countered jump. Yes. So what we don't want to do is get ourselves stuck in a settlement and then countered with a subsequent attack. I will bring my other lord in so he gains some experience. Sigma compels us. And I'll even put this guy in there to also get some experience. Cool. We don't want to raise any more elected counts. We're just going to confederate the rest of them and take the ter territory directly. Uh, over the end turn, Scrag has decided to attack the fort. Let's see if we can hold this off. It's definitely not impossible. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh no. army and earn us a lot of cash. That could not have gone worse for Scrag. Turn 27, let's move these fire mages up to the four. Uh, that'll do. That's one fire mage. A life mage, very, very welcome. Right, we are moving our secondary army down. And Carl will force us to retreat. Now, we're going to flesh out this army by hiring a couple of regiments of renown. And I think we need one more line holder and one more range unit here to make sure we can get the job done. I want to be really safe, so we'll get some cab as well. We have a rebellion in Marienburg coming up. The Lord of Good Levels on him. Now, I could go after Scrag, but I think we need to double down and go all out in taking down the vampires. All their armies are centralized here. If we can take these out, I think we can just wipe them with one push. We really need to smell the blood in the water and attack while the going is good because it might not stay this good. This is gonna send us semi-broke, but we need to push as hard as we can while we can. 
and we're gonna get some money. So we need a bunch of hand gunners and then some Reichsguard to give to Carl. That's all this army is designed to do, is to transport troops. Is there anything else we can sign for yeah. some more cash? Okay, it's time to bring some of these units up. So let's hire, uh, we need three Reichsguard because four total for Carl Franz and one more unit of hand gunners. Actually, you know what, we'll grab uh, an artillery piece so they can fire over the top. This looks great. Now, I don't want to lose this settlement here, so let's force march a secondary lord in there and bring in, put both of our mages inside. And Carl, I don't want to get hit by both of these armies because both Vlad and Isabella in the same army. Now, I want to take both of these settlements next turn, so we're going to bring Carl up here in in camp stance because both of these armies will be able to handle whatever they throw at us. Turn 29, let's move up to the midway point. I think this army's safe. I, I'm trusting that it is, and now we can move forward. Let's take this northern path here. We're going to keep our armies together because I'm somewhat worried that we could have Vlad being a bit sneaky. Let's move up. Ah, it looks all good. So, Balthazar Gelt has less movement, so we're going to move him up first. Okay, capture the settlement, and let's get ready to face Vlad. Occupy. Let's move Carl just up. Still in range, of course. We don't want this guy getting away, but we want our second army to reinforce. Now he is absolutely boxed in and pretty screwed. Another rebellion. We can just hire a lord to help protect it. Has put a bit of a strain on upkeep. Uh, we'll need to make a bit more money, so let's see what we can sign and earn a bit of cash on. This will help. Great. Let's conquer the rest of this territory with guilt. Order resolving and, of course, occupying the territory. Nice. And we have an army that's going all out. <laughs> How are we going to deal with this? Well, we need someone to help guard this territory, so he's going to have to be the guy that does it. Okay, so we can hire some elves, and that will certainly help. Just some Vega would be great, honestly. If we live, fuck, they're not instant. Okay. Let's see how this goes. I'm a bit concerned, but yeah, we're suffering attrition, but I think we can make this work. Oh, and there's Vlad. Yes, I will can we handle this army? That is a tough army. I don't think we can win it, so we're going to save this captain and send him over to Carl and pray <laughs> for Sigma. All right, over then turn, he did attack us. All right, we're deploying just pretty much on the front line. We've got a few banks here to help uh, bottleneck them into place. Everyone shooting? What are you guys doing? Nice, using Plague of Rust to lower the armor. Searing Doom on the blobs of the enemies. Turn 31, moving our secondary army up, getting some experience. Carl can take out this guy, and that is Vlad. Down. He only has a couple of settlements left, and they are virtually defenseless. This army will take the first one, and we can start making our way. We finally managed to shake the hand of Marienburg. It only took half the campaign. As you say, sir. Now it's finally time to finish off Vlad. Start off by moving Carl into position, and his reinforcements. We don't want anyone in march stance unless they absolutely have to be to uh, reinforce the battle. Cool, he's got plenty. Let's bring the Reichsguard into Carl's army. Let's pull back. Yep, that was good. Now a secondary lord who's almost level 20, almost immortal. Alright, you are done. Absolutely done. And occupy. Sigma. The nation calls. I command here. And leveling Carl Franz, uh, we're now at a point where we've got some decent range units. We're going to buff them with the level 7 buff. 
and then we're kind of gonna back off. We've got all we need right now, a stable front line. Our cavalry will support this, but we also need Carl to be a beat stick as well. So Max, as much melee defense and defensive traits as you can. Now with this corner basically secure, we need some defense against Greg, who is the last and final obstacle we have till we can really call this area completely secure. Or we're losing relations here with Durthu. As I've mentioned many times, that's not acceptable. He's got quite low gold, so... Well, now we don't need as much military, so we're going to pass our units and get rid of one of our armies. That's not really doing so much for us. Man, Krom is doing really well. He's already got eight settlements, so let's upgrade this settlement here. And we've reduced our armies because we don't need as much over here. Collapse one army, save up, and build up these defenses in these more quiet turns. And it should only take another defeat or two to peace out with uh, Scrag and that will cement our territory here. All right, turn 33 in this corner, getting some halberdiers to help counter Scrag's army when it does come, which it surely is, <laughs> sooner than later. All right, and we've got most of our counts at 10 fealty. We're just waiting for that counter to go down. Man, 20 is too long, I hope they address Ready. that. 20 turns, way too long to get this confederation. Okay. On march, who calls? Carl, Ready. going one way. On march. And our general going the other. Nice. At turn 34, we won some rebellions. We can get our upgraded capital at Altdorf, which you should of course do as soon as possible. Let's upgrade these forts because I don't trust what's beyond that border. And just chill. Oh, okay. We are under attack. If we don't back that settlement out, it will certainly die. No state troops. If we need, we can hire some regiments of renown. We march. 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20. I think we can take that. We can take that. Let's get one archer. One archer unit. Last hazard you really have is Dryker. And if you're smart, like I said, and don't t uh, confederate Talabakland as soon as possible, you will have the breathing space you need. If you if you confederate this straight away, you have both Dryker and Vlad on your doorstep, and it's very hard to deal with. So another reason why we held off taking this, uh, she can be problematic, but you need to commit a lot of forces to get her out of her primary forest. She's currently at war only with Kislev. Uh, how are Kislev doing? Like the mother yeah, really good, really good. So Oh man, always losing units. Hate you, Vlad. No. Cool. Nice. Well, the ogres finally started to attack, and I don't know why, even on legendary, we still get an easy victory. I don't know why that is so high. Ready. And this army, I'm thinking can start taking the fight to Broken Axe. Oh. So, healing the nation calls. Healing. Cool. Affirmative. Ready. Upgrading some of these to tier two. We want these uh, Clothia industry buildings. They're so good. Only 250 gold per turn, but they only cost 500. So, two turns you break even, there's none of this risk on getting a return on investment. Really great. And now he wants peace. You'll get it, but you'll have to pay more than that. And turn 36, we can finally confederate Midland. Welcome home, Todd. All right, and this time we are inheriting a completely built up province way better than having to spend all of our own cash building it up. So happy days Let's go out here with the witch hunter Oh pretty pretty decent army you've got here Boris. I need to take care of Grom the Vonch Oh, we don't need the secondary army just gonna send us broke. We need to start upgrading our buildings as well, so Pick up the pace. Nice. What? Alright, these guys have quite poor balance of power. Which means they probably lost their army, so this is the opportune time to strike. Bring me to my men. 
Defensive alliance. Hmm, no. I will get that. Take care first. Of this around grows. Rebuild. Ah. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> what? What actually just happened? Why? What did I do? <laughs> what the? F uh, victory conditions. Ah, oh, okay. Cool. Um. All right. Well, we'll go to turn forty and see what it looks like. Well, since we won the short victory, we gain an increase in our cap of heroes. So, uh, if we get this technology, it's only six turns. It will give us an extra couple of heroes as well as another three to their recruit rank. So. We have Midland, and we'll get Teller back one very soon. Alright, it's going to cost us some money, but it's worth getting some trade to go through. A nice increase of around two to 300 per turn. And as for Dryker, let's move ourselves oh, up. Double check we don't have any enemies. That can surprise us. We uh, take the boulder resolve. We are not reinstating any more counts. We don't need to waste Imperial Authority on them. Wood Elves here are starting to get some strange ideas, so we'll get them to join at least one other war need to keep them happily on side. Now that we have no risk of being attacked from this side, let's knock down these walls of Grunberg and we can get the armory building which is necessary to get Demi Griff Knights. Turn 38 and Draka is coming back very angry. I think we need to take this capital before we do anything else. What does this look like on auto resolve? Yeah, I'll take that. Alright, so I don't think they're going to attack me there. Currently at 65% chance, but I'll take that. We march. And I think we'll need a catapult, a mortar to break down those walls. Wouldn't mind some Reichsguard as well. We'll get guilt up, and we'll, we'll also hire a few crossbows and spears. Cool, and we have started our assault on Grom Paunch. He's got eight settlements, but uh, I think we're up for the challenge. Can we get to join this battle? You can. Oh, you'll do it. Let's do it. Yes. And turn 40. Let's take the remaining settlements. Eliminate Draka completely. Oh, she's going around for it, but that's okay. We'll deprive her of her income and her troops will fall apart. Oh, we would also trade with us now as well as can they. That trading card has to be adding up a fair bit. There we go. 5,700 just from trade. Loving it. This is pretty secure. This whole front here. And the moment we've been waiting for confederating Telebac ones. Peace out with her. You still like us for that, Gizlev? Yeah, you still. He can underpass under here, so just got to be mindful of that. By the comet. But that's pretty much it. I mean, how do we go? 41 turns. 41 settlements. There we go. Um, This was hard. Pretty close to getting the final victory as well. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. I uh, can't wait for the Empire rework. Hopefully this gives you some new ideas, and even if you're revisiting this campaign and you haven't played in ages, I think there's some really great techniques to show how you can overcome adversity, because one thing great about this campaign is it throws a ton at you and forces you to react with all the tools available. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is Alvin Plot Armor. I'll catch you next time.